Hi, uh, my name is Ari Grenberg Peshkin, and I'm a graduate student at Princeton. Um, and I've also been working with Meg and Damien on this baboon data set. And I'm going to be answering Roland's question about leadership in the group, or not answering necessarily, but starting to get at. Um, and I just wanted to mention that um, this is all very new work. Um, so we're really interested in hearing people what people think about it. Um, and it's all sort of preliminary. So. Um, so first of all, why is leadership actually important in these groups? So at the most fundamental level, these groups have to stay together throughout the day. Um, so they start out um, each morning, and they sleep in these trees together. And then they come down from the trees. Um, at, you know, hang, they hang around by the trees for a bit, and then they set off together. And they move around together throughout the day, foraging. Um, and then eventually, they come back to these trees. So that means that because they have to stay together, um, they have to make consensus decisions about where to go. Um, and they have to make these decisions um, taking into account the fact that individuals may vary in their motivation. Um, and also, there's these dominance relations that we know are very important in these groups. Um, so they have to contend with all of that, and also in a heterogeneous environment. Um, so we think that leadership is really interesting in these groups for that reason. So in general, when we think about leadership in animal groups, um, we can kind of think about it as falling on a spectrum between decisions that are completely despotic and decisions that are completely democratic. So if a decision is completely despotic, that means that one individual gets to decide um, where the group goes, and everyone else just follows that individual. Versus completely democratic would be that everybody, kind of, everybody votes, and um, everybody kind of has an equal weight in deciding where the group goes. Um, and this question has kind of been explored in different systems. Um, one system that people have generally kind of talked about as being relatively despotic is in um, mountain gorillas, where it's kind of general. The, the story is that the um, the alpha male basically gets to get up and decide and move, and then everyone else follows him. Um, whereas at the other end of the spectrum, we have things like fish schools, um, where we generally think of these as being relatively democratic. Um, and then kind of in the middle, we have this idea of hierarchical leadership, um, where there might be some sort of hierarchy of decision making. Um, and there's actually some evidence um, for this in pigeon flocks. Um, it's a paper that came out in 2010. Um, and so, but really, we don't know a whole lot about this question. There's not really been a lot of work um, looking into it. Um, and really, there, there hasn't been enough uh, data to actually get at this until, um, so we're just sort of starting to get at this now. Um, so in addition to the question about how leadership is distributed, you also have the question of um, who leads. So this could be based on stable characteristics of individuals, such as their um, age, sex, or size. Um, it could also have to do with social status or dominance of individuals, or things like personality differences between individuals. There's also these more ephemeral um, characteristics of individuals that might determine who leads. For example, some individuals have, might, might have information about where food is, um, or some individuals might have more motivation to go in certain directions. Um, and also, there might be certain positions in groups that are related to um, who gets to decide where, where the group goes. So what exactly do I mean by leadership? Um, I would define leadership in kind of a really broad way by saying that um, leadership is exerting some kind of influence over a group decision. Um, and when we talk about um, what we're talking about here is actually movement leadership, so decisions about where to go and when to go. So you can kind of divide it up into um, decisions about timing of when the group um, sets off in a certain um, direction. And then there's the decision about what direction the group chooses. So um, in getting at leadership from movement, da from movement data, um, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. So kind of the simplest thing is to look at who's in front. Um, you can also look at um, who makes a move first. Um, or on, in the converse, who stops first. Um, you can also look at who initiates changes in direction. Um, and what I'm going to actually be talking about today is um, sort of a, a different way of looking at it, where we sort of look at these spring-like interactions between individuals, which I'll explain in a second. So um, if we think of baboons as kind of having these social forces um, that are pulling on each other, you can imagine two types of interactions. Um, 
One is where you have one individual that moves out, and then another one follows. So this is kind of a, what I call a pull. And that's the panel on the left there. Um, the second is if an individual moves out and then comes back. And this is what I call an anchor. Um, so you can think of pulling as kind of a successful um, initiation of motion on the part of the individual that did the pulling, which in ca this case is the black baboon. Um, and you can think of anchoring kind of in two ways, either as um, a failed initiation of motion, where the black individual kind of tried to go out and then came back, or as um, a successful stopping of motion on the part of the green individual here, basically said, we're staying here. So of course, um, I want to point out here um, and be clear that we can't be sure that these are causal relationships, right? So we can only look at these in, in a kind of, um, look at overall patterns in the data. Um, and to really get at causal relations, I think we would have to do experiments. Um, so I want to show you just one example of each of these um, types of interactions. So this is a polling interaction, and you're going to see that this, uh, this, I think it's this blue, dark blue individual is going to lead a, a light blue individual. Oops, this video might be a bit choppy here, unfortunately. But you can kind of see that. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, sorry, the, the video seems to have issues in this PowerPoint presentation. Um, but basically, you can see that one individual went out, and then the, the next one came along later. Um, and here's an example of an anchoring interaction. to be stuck. There we go. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so, um, but anyway, you, you get the idea. Um, so um, we can pull out these interactions um, from the data. And one question we might ask is, are there certain individuals that pull more than others? Um, and within a dyad, are there certain, you know, is one individual always the puller and all one individual always the pulley. So we can kind of pull out these overall patterns of pulling and anchoring. Um, so the way that we have been doing that so far is um, by extracting and categorizing events, um, as I showed you. Um, we can then count up these events for each pair of individuals. Um, and we can get this E of AB, which is the number of events where individual A pulls individual B, or the number of events where individual A anchors individual B depending on what we're looking at. Um, then we can compute this directionality measure for each pair of individuals. So this is the, um, the number of events where A pulled B minus the number of events where B pulled A divided by the sum of those two. So this is going to be a number between negative 1 and 1, where um, if it's 1, that means that A always pulls B, and B never pulls A. Pulls a. Um, and if it's negative 1, then it's the reverse. So we can get these um, basically directed um, relationships between each pair of individuals. And then if we do this for all pairs, we can construct this leader follower, essentially a, what's a, a leader follower network um, at the troop level. And then we can look at how is this network structured. Sorry? Um, so the events can take, um, I can talk more about the, how, uh, the, the time scale. Um, we can pull out events at basically any time scale. Um, but I can, if you want, I can go into the more of the details of how we pull out the events afterwards. Does that, did that answer your question? Okay, great. Um, so if we look at this network, where here I'm showing the directionality between individuals, um, we actually find that it has this really interesting structure. So um, how to read this here is that we have each individual on the X and Y axes here, and the dot color represents the age sex class. Um, and if, um, if the column individual leads the row, or pull, in this case pulls the row individual more often than the row pulls the column, it'll be red. Um, and the, if the reverse is true, it'll be blue. So for example, this individual um, here, 2451, pulls everybody. So if you think about it as a network, 
that individual is here, that individual is pulling everybody. The second individual here pulls everybody except for the first individual, right? So you can think of constructing those links. And what you get is you get this hierarchical structure where you can kind of construct this linear um, hierarchy of individuals and where I can pull everyone below me in the hierarchy, but not those above me on average. So um, the first thing we can ask is, are pullers in the front? Does this relate to spatial positioning within the group? Um, and in this case, it turns out that they are. So on the x-axis here, we have the pull rank. So lower rank means that I'm higher up in the hierarchy, or I pull more individuals. Um, and you see that, um, and the y-axis is the distance in front of the troop centroid on average. So you see that those who are in the front um, are, the, are the ones that are on top in the pull hierarchy. So we can also look at anchoring. Um, so here we're, we're making the same type of plot where um, it'll be more red if the column individual anchors the row individual more often. And we see that we also get a relatively hierarchical structure here because all the, the red is on the top and all the blue is on the bottom. So we can again kind of pull out this hierarchy of anchoring within the group as well. And we can ask, are those that anchor in the front on average? Um, and it turns out that they aren't, and they're actually, um, those that anchor tend to be more in the back of the group. So um, we might be interested in comparing these networks. Um, so here's just another representation um, of the pull network. So here, um, those who pull are on the left. Those who are pulled are on the right. And if there's a link shown on the top here, that means that that is a link that's going down the hierarchy. So a link in the expected direction from puller to pulley. Um, and you can barely see, but there's, well, you really can't see, but there's very few links that are um, on the bottom here. And those represents links that go in the wrong direction with respect to the hierarchy. So basically what this is saying is that it's very hierarchical. Um, and we can line that up with the anchor network. Um, and here you can actually see a few of these links going in the, the wrong direction. But still, you know, very few relative to all these links going in the right direction. Um, and so one thing we can ask is, are those who pull the same individuals as those who anchor? Because if you have um, despotic, uh, relatively despotic leadership overall, you might expect that those individuals that are able to pull others are also able to say, no, we're staying here. Um, so if that were the case, you would expect that since we have those who pull over here and those who anchor over here, you would expect that we'd get lots of crossing uh, relations. Uh, so sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm going to connect um, the same individuals in both of these hierarchies. So these dotted lines show um, where this individual is, in this, where the, this individual here is in the pull network and in the anchor network. And what you see is you don't get these really strong crosses. And um, instead, you get um, lots of cases where those who pull are also the same individuals who are anchored. Um, so that kind of suggests that there are some individuals that are um, often going out, and sometimes they are successful, and sometimes they are unsuccessful. And when they're unsuccessful, we count that as an anchor. And when they're successful, we count that as a pull. Um, you can also, um, there's kind of interesting things to look at here with um, the relationship between where I am in the pull hierarchy and where I am in the anchor hierarchy. So, um, for example, this top individual here is very high up in the pull hierarchy, um, but lower down in the anchor hi hierarchy. So that means that that individual is kind of being successful more often um, than being than failing. Um, and we can actually try and quantify that in a, a bit of a more rigorous way. Um, Um, but again, thinking about pulling as successful leadership and anchoring as failed leadership. Um, and we can look at what the fraction of events where I pull divided by the fraction of events, um, by, divided by the number of events where I either pulled or anchored. So it's basically like how often was I successful at pulling when I went out, right? So if we construct our um, do a similar analysis on this measure, we see that it's, again, hierarchical. Um, and 
we can again ask, are the most sort of effective leaders in the front, the ones that have a high poll fraction, um, are they also in the front? And it turns out that there seems to be a slight relationship, but it can't be all about being in the front, because there are still some individuals that are um, fairly high in this whole fraction um, hierarchy, but are not very far in front of the group. So that was all sort of at an average um, level over all the data, um, looking at sort of dyadic relationships um, over a long period of time. But we were also interested in looking at the dynamics of leadership. So basically, um, how, does, how do these pull and anchor events lead to the motion of the group, right? Um, so this is um, just a really um, preliminary look at the number of poles and the number of anchors over time um, on this top plot. And you can see that they kind of go up and down over time. Um, and this is the total number of events over the entire troop, like over all dyads. Um, and then on the bottom, I'm showing the total fraction of the number of poles to the number of poles and anchors um, in the green line. And the troop speed, um, like the average tr the speed of the troop in the black line. And um, it may be kind of interesting. Uh, there may be some interesting things here. Um, for example, the, uh, the green line seems to be going up um, before the troop speed goes up. So you can kind of see that the, there's pulling. Um, pulling starts to take over, and then the, the group sets off. So we're really interested in looking at these things um, in the future. So with that, um, I just wanted to, again, thank all of our collaborators um, and everybody who is working on the project. And I'll take any questions. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, we, sorry. So the question was, what about context? Um, are we looking at these events in different contexts? Um, so yes, we are. We are very interested in that. Um, there's, we can actually look at these. Basically, characterize. Um, yeah. Um, we can characterize sort of group level properties. So um, we can find times when the group is relatively stationary, when the group is um, moving fast, um, when the group is uh, kind of moving in a straight line or versus like more spread out. Um, and we can look at the, the um, leadership hierarchies only in these situations. Um, and we, so the results that I showed are actually very dominated by the times when the group is relatively stationary, um, just because that's most of our data. Um, but we, yes, we can also look at all these things. So, so we're very interested in comparing the leadership hierarchies that we get in different contexts. Um, and one interesting thing that's come out of that is that um, if we look at these progressions, which are like very linear formations where one follows the other, um, which have received a lot of focus in the primate um, world in the past, um, you find that the leadership hierarchies that you pull out from those progressions are completely uncorrelated with the leadership hierarchies you pull out from the other types of contexts. So that's kind of interesting from a, a data um, perspective. Yeah. Thanks for Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, so we have been trying to do some um, agent-based modeling and like running this type of analysis on the agent-based model. Um, so if you look at like the, just the overall amount that an individual moves, I think you, I believe you find that the anchoring um, network is correlated with that, but the um, pull network is not. Um, so, but we're definitely interested in, um, for example, if you could imagine that if you have a bunch of individuals that are kind of stopping and starting at random, um, you might be able to pull, you, you, those might like look like pull anchor interactions. Um, so we're definitely getting, um, into testing some of those null models. Yeah, sure. Uh, 